Now we're going to shift gears a little bit and talk about traumatic hip dislocations. Um, and so most of these are going to be posterior. Um, and these vary a little bit based on age. So the younger kids will sometimes have this from a low energy injury if they're uh, doing sports, trip, fall. Um, but when they're older, then it, just like you see in adults, it's mainly high energy uh, injuries. And the reason uh, that uh, we see them with lower energy uh, mechanisms in the younger children and also that they have fewer acetabular fractures associated is that they, number one, are going to have this um, ligamentous laxity um, and more flexibility as you know, kids tend to be a little bit uh, bouncier, um, but also that a portion of their acetabulum is cartilaginous, so it has more give for that reason. Typically, if you get these reduced well, um, they do really well long term. So um, on exam, they're going to present with significant pain. This is not going to be a subtle finding um, and inability to bear weight. And by far, the most common are going to be your posterior dislocations. In the case of a posterior dislocation, the uh, child's leg is typically held in flexion, adduction, and some internal rotation. In the anterior dislocations, which, again, are much uh, less common, you're going to have extreme external rotation um, and a lot of abduction. It has to be really uh, rotated and abducted to, to slip anterior. There's about a 10% incidence of sciatic or gluteal nerve palsies, um, but uh, in the younger age groups, it's a little less common. So most of the time, the diagnosis for this can be made just with the uh, plain radiographs. Um, generally, an AP pelvis film is uh, all you need to know that the hip's dislocated, um, but then if you're uh, not sure based on the leg position um, exactly which way you can do a lateral hip radiograph to confirm the position. Usually that's also um, sort of superfluous. So um, the other thing that's really critical here is that after you reduce it, you uh, get adequate imaging showing that it's reduced. And we have to really scrutinize these uh, uh, images to make sure that there's no joint incongruity or a non-concentric reduction. So um, one thing I would say is, uh, sorry, I lost my cursor again. There we go. Um, the uh, This is not the film you want to order. So I uh, would be very unhappy if my residents just ordered a hip film. I want them to order a pelvis film so that you can compare the uninjured side to the injured side. But even though this part of this is cut off, you can see that this joint space is much smaller and more concentric than what you're seeing over here. So you know you need to get more imaging and find out what's blocking that uh, from sitting nicely in the joint. OK, question. An 18-year-old male sustains a right hip injury after being tackled on the football field. Uh, figure A shows his radiograph upon presentation to the emergency room three hours later. On physical exam, he's noted to have a foot drop and decreased sensation globally throughout his entire lower leg. Close reduction under conscious sedation is immediately performed, and the hip is able to be ranged through a stable arc of motion following reduction. Post-reduction radiograph is shown in figure B. Shortly after the reduction, the patient continues to have a foot drop, but his sensation is slightly improving. Which of the following is the mo most appropriate next step in management? Okay. So um, here are the images, and you can see um, that this uh, now looks located. But again, as we said, you want to confirm that with a uh, CT scan or MRI. Okay. And this is just showing you what it may look like um, if you get a post-reduction CT and it's not concentrically reduced. So we know that, yes, the femoral head is in uh, the acetabulum, but it's not sitting in there. And while it's a little bit hard to see, it looks like there's an uh, osteochondral fragment here in this position that's entrapped. So that has to be removed so that the uh, femoral head can sit deeply. And uh, again, so uh, a CT can help you see uh, if there's osteochondral fragments. Um, if there's labrum or capsule that's entrapped, um, you will uh, see that it's not concentrically reduced. Uh, but an MRI may be uh, a little bit easier for you to determine what interposed tissue you're dealing with. Um, again, irregardless, um, you know that if it's not concentrically reduced, you need to do, go to the operating room and take uh, 
the um, what's interposed, be it uh, bone, soft tissue, um, capsule, out of that area so that the uh, femoral head can be where it's supposed to be. Um, so in terms of treatment, the first step is generally closed reduction uh, under uh, heavy sedation or general uh, anesthesia. Um, and uh, there's a little bit of a debate as to whether or not fluoroscopy needs to be used in all cases. Um, uh, but we um, you know, don't want to um, delay too much in terms of uh, getting the hip in. Um, most of the time, this can be suc successfully reduced with closed means. And one thing that I would say is a pearl um, is when, after you reduce it, um, you know, we talk about the stability uh, and the arc of motion, you want to really document what your safe zone is. If you have a really small safe zone um, before the hip flips out again, then that's a patient that probably has a significant acetabular uh, injury or a lot of soft tissue in the joint. Something's making it unstable. And sometimes that's easier to assess from your uh, exam uh, than it is from the imaging because the acetabulum in these young children is in large part, there's there's a large cartilaginous component. Um, so you may have what looks like a small posterior wall fragment. Um, and sometimes those are fine and can be treated non-operatively. And sometimes those are associated with significant instability and may require operative stabilization. So just use the time that you have while um, the child's under anesthesia or sedated uh, to, to evaluate how stable your reduction is. OK, next question, a 10-year-old boy sustained an Isolated injury shown in figure A. Immediate closed reduction was performed in the emergency room with conscious sedation. Post-reduction radiographs are shown in figure B and post-reduction CT scan in figure C. What is the next appropriate step in management? And your options are going to be repeat closed reduction, skeletal traction for one month, hip arthrotomy via posterior approach, hip arthrotomy via anterior approach, or weight bearing is tolerated with close follow-up and serial radiographs. OK. so. Um, if anybody doesn't get this, you have not been paying attention because we are kind of beating this point to death. If you get a CT scan and it's not reduced, you have to go to the operating room and get that stuff out. Um, the only sort of, uh, you know, trickster thing here they put in was posterior versus anterior. And generally, you want to go in the direction uh, that the uh, dislocation occurred. Posterior is going to be way more common uh, by a lot. Um, and uh, you don't want to go from the anterior aspect because you may not be able to get to that fragment that's blocking you because that's not where it came from. OK. So um, again, indications for an open reduction are non-concentric reduction, um, intra-articular fragments, um, and you want to go from the direction of the dislocation. After it's reduced, you want to test the hip stability. Um, again, this is like using your, uh, your sedation opportunity to make sure that this has a uh, fairly stable range. Um, and then generally, um, you may want to uh, do some immobilization. If they have a really big safe zone, it's super stable, that may not be needed. Um, but if that's uh, not the case, um, and you don't have any clear indication, uh, such as an acetabular fragment um, that needs to be addressed, then um, you can use either a spica cast or a hip abduction brace for uh, stability while uh, everything's healing back in. Okay. Um, and again, you don't, um, especially if there's there's uh, an associated uh, fracture here, um, or if it seems like the epiphysis is hinged, um, then you uh, don't want to be uh, forcing things uh, against um, that edge of the acetabulum because the child isn't adequately uh, uh, sedated. Um, and in some cases, uh, if it looks like this is going to be high risk, you may want to use fluoroscopy while you're doing it. OK, so in general, uh, we reduce fracture, assess the safe zone. If it's irreducible uh, or not concentrically reduced, then it's taken for open reduction, usually via posterior approach. Again, if it was an anterior dislocation, we would do an anterior approach. And then um, you want to, once you have it reduced, um, again, get a CT and or MRI to confirm the reduction. And then we usually do a hip abduction brace. We do, most oftentimes, they're not going to do a spica cast um, uh, for six weeks or so to maintain the reduction. OK. So um, uh, next question, a three-year-old male is an unrestrained backseat passenger or car involved in a head-on collision. An injury radiograph is seen in figure A. A delay in achieving a concentric reduction has been shown to increase the risk of and 
everybody knows now that that's avascular necrosis. Okay, so other complications you can see, osteonecrosis um, is less uh, frequent in um, uh, kids, so AVN can happen in the hip dislocations, but not as commonly as we see it, uh, certainly from the femoral neck fractures. And uh, coxa magna is something that you usually, uh, will, well, not usually, but uh, can um, commonly see on x-ray, but it generally doesn't have any associated significance, so it's sort of a... Um, academic uh, point. Okay. Uh, Redislocations are rare as long as this is adequately uh, reduced um, and there's nothing interposed and the associated injuries have been addressed. And a sciatic or gluteal nerve injury, while it can occur, uh, is not, um, uh, doesn't commonly require any intervention. Usually if you promptly reduce it, it's going to recover with time. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.